Her Excellency, Mr. Teresa Rivera, President of the Assembly. Uh, His Excellency Francis Cola Camera, the Director General of Arena. Hello, ministers, ladies and gentlemen. We've just been through a pandemic, the likes of which the world has not seen ever. There have been pandemics, pandemics before, but never a pandemic which actually hit all parts of the world at the same time. This was a major challenge. But if anything, it demonstrated that actually we are all in one boat and there is no alternative, there is I mean, no second planet. Now this, if anything, should uh, make us alive and uh, most likely it will make us alive, the fact that there is a challenge which is as grave as this pandemic, which has been staring at our face for a long time. And that is the challenge of the environment, the declining environment. This is something which our government takes very seriously, has been taken very seriously ever since our government came to office in 2014. Now, uh, this will just indicate to you how seriously we are going about it. In our uh, uh, NDCs uh, in Paris, COP21, uh, we had pledged that by 2030, 40% of our installed capacity will come from non-fossil fuel sources. So I'm happy to inform you that already about 36.5% of our generation capacity is coming from non-fossil fuel sources. We're already at 36.5% against a target of 40% by 2030. By 2030, at the rate at which we are going, our non-fossil fuel capacity will be 63% of our installed capacity. Uh, from 15 to 19, we the finalized bids of about 78,000 megawatts of just solar and wind. I'm not counting hydro. And uh, our total non-fossil fuel capacity today is 136 gigawatts. And uh, we have another 50 gigawatts under installation. And about another about 22 gigawatts under bid. So we are, we, ha we are for the past few years, we have been the fastest growing renewable energy capacity in the world, and we intend to continue being that. We have also been rated by Bloomberg as the most attractive uh, destination for investments in renewables because of uh, you know, our transparent procedures and the way we are adding capacity, and every fund in the world is invested here. So we are uh, transitioning at a very rapid pace. We've also carried out the uh, largest expansion of access ever in the world. We added about 28 million consumers in the just about 18 months. We connected every hamlet and every household in our country. We connected the whole country into one grid and we connected every household, 28 million households in um, just 18 months. Now, uh, this pace did not let up. We did not let the pace slacken even during the lockdown, even during COVID. During the lockdown period, we added uh, we finalized bids of 13,450 megawatts. Uh, that, that, that was during the COVID period. So we have not slackened the pace and we don't intend to slacken the pace. Our energy demand is growing. You know, every day uh, I find that our energy demand is about 10,000 to 12,000 megawatts more than it was in the corresponding day last year, despite the fact that we have not fully come out of COVID as yet. So it's going to accelerate. And the demand which is being created, we are uh, filling that demand through non-fossil fuel capacity. We've carried out a number of innovations. We've, you know, we've carried out round the clock bids for round the clock green and uh, green energy. We carried out bids uh, for floating, uh, floating solar and uh, solar wind hybrid. So we are trying new things. We have, we have uh, uh, finalized bids with storage energy with storage. And as we see storage becoming cheaper and cheaper, I see this transition in our country going faster and faster because we are fully committed to the transition. We believe that this is something which is absolutely necessary that we leave behind a world which is a healthier planet for our great grand, uh, grandchildren and great grandchildren. Now we have taken all the attendant steps as well. Now in, we uh, installed a green energy corridor. In the first phase, that cost about $1.5 billion. 
then we've come up with another green energy corridor. We are uh, in the process of executing that. That is going to cost us about $7.16 billion. Then uh, we have also, uh, now our overall, if you look at our vision, if you ask me what my vision is, my vision is to electrify the economy and uh, green the electricity. Very simple. Electrify the economy means we want to shift our other sectors to electricity, like mobility. So we have a program whereby we are assist, whereby we plan to have about uh, you know the 11 to 12 million vehicles to electric by 2030, and uh, we have a program for that. Uh, in the first part of the program, we had a uh, you know given assistance of 1.2 billion dollars to people who bought electric cars. In the second phase of the program, we are giving an assistance of $1.36 billion to people who buy electric vehicles. So electric mobility is a priority with our government. Our second priority is shifting cooking to electricity. And of course, we are shifting electricity to renewables. And uh, uh, we are happy at the pace we are going. We are happy at the pace we are going. We are a large country. We are growing rapidly. And so that is providing us with the space for the transition. So this transition is actually uh, not really been very difficult. It would have been more difficult if I had did not have that space which the increase in demand has provided. Now there are some, some other advantages which we have seen in our country. One major advantage is that the prices have come down. Now because the prices have come down, elect electricity has become more affordable for the poorer also. So that's why our consumption is growing up, uh, going up because of the appliances, et cetera, who the poor are buying and we connected every household. So that cost is another thing. The, th the second advantage which it gave us was access in the sense that we have many parts of our country which are very difficult, you know, very mountainous, some of the highest mountainous regions in the world and so deserts as well with one hamlet here, another hamlet about 20 kilometers away. Now the facility of distributed generation, which renewable energy provided us, enabled us to you know, ensure 100% access everywhere. Now we are trying to uh, take this advantage to the other countries to the International Solar Alliance, uh, which we have founded. And our next vision, of course, is one sun, one world, one grid. That's the vision laid down by our prime minister, whereby we believe that the sun never sets. I mean, when it sets in one country, it actually rises in another country. So if you actually connect countries, then probably your costs of storage will go down. And incidentally, you have some very uh, you know, major bids coming up, about 10,000 megawatts in Ladakh, that's the highest plains in the world, with the maximum insulation. It has more insulation than Rajasthan. So we are going to bid out about 10,000 megawatts there. And uh, of course, we have already some of the largest solar parks in the world. But uh, and our next objective is, again, offshore wind. That is another. Uh, big, large bit which you'll see coming up. Thank you.